I'm actually pretty stinking excited for this one. Um, hey everybody, Jason here. I hope you're all doing really good. Today I'm going to be having a look at the all new BL8800 Pro from Blackview. Now let's not waste any time screwing around here and let's get this thing open right on up. I don't know what it is about these uh, international packages and this yellow tape. I think it's like a customs deterrent maybe. I, I, I don't know. All right, here we go. It's wrapped in plastic, just like I had hoped. All right, so let's not beat around the bush here. The reason I am so very excited for this phone is because this phone has built-in thermal imaging, folks, and it's also a 5G phone. So let's get this thing out of the package and have a look at it here, and then I'm gonna run over the specs here real quick. Peeling this sticker off the back of here right now saves me like two hours of editing time. Stick this over here. I'm going to be very careful not to accidentally peel the entire screen protector off. So let's just carefully peel that off of there. There we go. Now, the major difference in this phone, if we have a look at the back of it, this is so freaking awesome. We have our normal array of, you know, every smartphone manufacturer now feels like they got to put as many cameras on the back as they can. But we also have this FLIR sensor we have a thermal imaging camera on this phone. I have been telling my wife and everybody around me that I just, I'm not gonna know what to do when the day comes where I have a thermal camera in my pocket all the time. Ooh, I can tell that water's hotter than you. Today's the day, oh boy. Now comparing these two side by side, this is the BL, uh, no, 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 BV8800, and this is the BL8800. Honestly, if these two phones were just sitting on the table next to each other, looking at the front of them, you know, other than my gaudy screen protector, I don't think I'd be able to tell the difference. They look, they look a lot the same. I think they have actually maybe reused the same housing and just changed this little plate on the back. This phone comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. It has a MediaTek Diamond Dimensity. I should probably Google this and come back to this review. The screen resolution is 2408 by 1080. It has a fingerprint sensor that is built into the power button. And then on the other side is the multi-function key, which you can set up to do all sorts of crazy things. We have an air pressure sensor as well as standard GPS connection. It also has a IP68 and IP69K water resistant rating. And it comes with a whopping 8380 milliamp hours of battery life and 33 watts of fast charging. So no wireless charging. I really like seeing that the thermal imaging is actually made by FLIR. I don't think it's going to have quite the resolution as like the Seek camera goes, but I mean, Convenience. Convenience, man. We have a 50 megapixel rear camera and it is running Doc OS 3.0, which is just based on Android 11. So it looks like we've got some pretty stinking decent cameras. I do want to say, and to be completely straight, honest, straightforward with everybody, my Blackview BV8800, you know, they show people like jumping off of cliffs and snapping the picture in the video, like clicking the picture as they're falling and stuff. Maybe I'm just using it wrong, but so far I haven't gotten like the snappiness needed to stop the rotor on a helicopter or catch a falling object. I do wind up with some blurring in the photos. Now it also came with this guitar pick thingy. That is to pretty well to open the SIM tray, but also more than anything, this flap has actually been pretty stinking difficult to open. And over time it's gotten a little bit easier to open. The charger says it'll do five volts at three amps, nine volts at three amps. It'll also do 12 volts at two and a half amps, 15 volts at two amps, or 20 volts at one and a half amps. Now it does have the wrong plug on it for our power system here, but this thing will run at 200, you know, it'll run with an input voltage of 100 volts all the way up to 240 volts. And it also works at 50 or 60 Hertz. So, I mean, you just literally just plug it into an adapter. Now let's not waste any more time here. I know everybody wants to see this thermal imaging in action. I mean, that's, that is the deal with these rugged phones. They come with crazy features that you just don't get on an Apple phone or like a name brand phone. They're packing some really cool stuff in here. Even if this is a lower resolution, and I, I think it's going to be than what I'm used to, having that convenience in my pocket, oh boy. 
Oh, this is nice. It came in Russian, so we basically have to learn a different language here. Um, surely this is the box to pick something different, right? Let's go ahead and choose something I can understand just a, a little bit better. So we're going to do English, United States. Now, I'm not going to put a SIM card in this just yet. I'm going to get to that just a little bit later. I am going to go ahead and start moving right on into this phone because I'm excited. I wonder how the performance of this is going to compare to the BV8800. You know, it had the MediaTek G96, and this one has, what, the Diminicity, Diminicity 700, however you say that. It's supposed to be better. That, that's all I'm saying here. So I have a couple of things set up on here and it is usable, but I'm not going to waste any more time here. You all want to see it. I want to see it. What's this thermal imaging like? So I've been sitting here setting things up and I have resisted to click on the camera icon. This is going to be my very first test. I mean, assuming we just go into the regular camera, right? If we plug in a FLIR camera, we have to load up the FLIR app. So it is just like as if we were to plug in a FLIR thermal camera. Uh, we are actually going to use the FLIR app. Would you like to allow this app to take? Yes, uh, yes I would, while using the app every single time. Yep, we're going to be doing sound. I would like to have location stamps on all my files. That's massively useful. All right, here we go. I think I just heard it click. I'm sure I heard it click. Oh my goodness. So it looks like we're going to have all of the standard FLIR options that we have, like using an external FLIR camera only the hardware is just built into the phone. How cool is that? Now, one main, one, one big drawback that I can talk about here is that this watermark, that's most likely mandatory. And this isn't the fault of Blackview. Even the FLIR camera that I have that plugs into the bottom of, you know, a lightning port or, you know, these, these FLIR cameras, they watermark the content. Like, who do they think they are? All right. Thermal camera, check this out. These things are way sensitive. I'm gonna lay my hand here on the table. Oh, and it's got the, uh, the MSX too. Watch when I move my hand away. My handprint will stay behind for a long time. Now, whenever I said MSX just now, we're talking about this adjustment here. It's basically this, what's happening here is we have a thermal imager and we also have a visible camera and they're both working at the same time. And the MSX, what that does is it adjusts the two together and tries to get, you know, tries to make them match up. So let's use my hand for example. And you can see how the visible image is slightly misaligned with the thermal image. And if we slide this MSX bar, which I'm telling you right now, this is really hard to do with a heavy phone and only two hands, especially when one of them is the example. What I did there was just brought the visible image and the thermal image together. And that gives a really good representation of my hand. And now when I move it, this is awesome. Thank you, Blackview, for giving me the opportunity to review this phone. So I think one question that a lot of people considering buying something like, something like this is going to be asking is whether or not it's going to work with your carrier. Now, some carriers, at least here in the United States, they have been going to a whitelist only deal to where the device has to be on their list of approved devices in order to work. Now. They are doing this under what I'm calling an excuse that says it's not compatible because it has to be voice over LTE compatible or it has to support HD voice. Well, so far, every single device that I have had denied due to not being compatible over voice over LTE or HD voice, they completely have the hardware. The only thing wrong is that it's not on their whitelist. Blackview they have made it really easy to circumvent this. I don't know if this is something that they've put into their custom Doak OS, but you can go to the dial pad and type in a string of digits and it will pop up with IMEI maintenance. And with that, you can literally just take a phone that you know is compatible and put that IMEI number in there. And then your carrier will then think that this phone is that 
compatible phone. So I've just about got this thing set up here and I'm going to use the term updated. I have updated my IMEI to be compatible with my carrier and I'm just going to slip this right on down in there. There we go. Let's see if it works now. I'm pretty sure it will. Oh yeah. This thing works with sunglasses both ways. So how about outside in broad daylight? How well does this thing do? Now, right away, I can see some major advantages to using thermal imaging rather than night vision. We're going to try that later on and see exactly how it does with night vision. But the night vision, it's going to be really limited in range because it depends on, you know, the infrared LED to shine. Whereas this thermal imaging, it should see quite a bit farther than that. Okay, here we are back out here at nighttime. And now look what's warm. Holy crap, the whole entire pool glows. Oop, there goes my dog. So on the right, we have night vision from the Blackview BV8800. And on the left, we have thermal imaging from the Blackview, Blackview BL8800 Pro. And the thermal imaging is allowing me to see quite a bit farther. Uh, of course, the you know, the night vision, it's, it's more detailed, but it is requiring the infrared light on the back of the phone to shine in order to be able to see this stuff. So it's more like a invisible light vision. It's not really night vision at all. So looking over in this direction, you really can't see anything at all on the infrared, whereas the thermal image is pretty stinking bright. Looking at this row of boats, it was really easy to tell which one of them had just been parked because, well, it had a hot motor. So that covers some of the out of the shop playing stuff. How about at the workbench? So here I am troubleshooting a Galaxy S10, I believe, that has a short in one of the power ICs. And the larger image you see here is being done using the Blackview BL8800 Pro and the FLIR camera. And the smaller image you see here, that is being done using a Seek Compact Pro. The Seek Compact Pro, I believe, has double the resolution as this FLIR sensor, but I am still probably going to wind up using the FLIR camera more because it's it's convenient. I've got my phone in my hand pretty much all the time and it's right there readily available. So here is a Galaxy phone that unfortunately wound up having a subtle CPU short and this is the very last thermal image of it before I sent it to its grave. This is an iPhone 7 Plus. I thought this was going to have a RAM short, but check it out. It wound up just having a hot inductor due to a short in the rear camera solved. So to demonstrate the thermal imaging capabilities of the FLIR sensor just a little bit farther, I have set up a little bit of an experiment here. I've got a broken iPhone that no longer lights up, but it will charge. We are drawing 1.1 amps of charging current. That goes through this little five volt power supply and out to these clampies here that are actually hooked to that rather low quality solar panel right there, but it gets plenty of sun. We are drawing one and a quarter amps of charging current. Now, if we have a look at this setup with thermal imaging, oh look, you can actually see right there where the resistance is, where it's getting a bad connection. Right off the bat, the thermal camera can really just be kind of bleh and not really offer you a whole lot. But if you spend a, just a tiny bit of time and, and do some adjusting on here, I do like to use the MSX setting. That sort of helps us see where the, you know, the blobs of stuff belong. And we can sort of adjust that together to where it matches. Oh, now that thing is really, really stinking hot. So let's see what the Seek Compact Pro says about this, shall we? Now, Double the resolution makes quite a bit of difference. You can actually see the little chip, you can see the coil. Now, whenever I say hot, look at my 98.6 degree finger. It actually looks cold on this image. So, I mean, this chip is like, it's hot. Like it's uncomfortably hot on the tip of my finger. And the same is true for this, ow, for this coil. It's actually a little bit more than uncomfortably hot. So in all honesty, I think if you put the you know the two amp load on this thing that it's actually rated for something here is not going to be really happy so having a look at this again using the bl 8800 pro we can get the visible image pretty stinking well here 
But if we switch over to just thermal, here's where we're at on the thermal imaging. So if I get it down from the side here and adjust on the bar a little bit and, and, and really tune on it, I can get a pretty decent image as to where the heat is on this board. So I think that pretty well does it for the thermal camera. I mean, sure, it's not as high as quality as the Seat Compact Pro, but I mean, it can absolutely do it. And it's convenient. It's right there in my pocket all the time. Plus, if a guy really wanted to, you could just take and, you know, plug your Seat Compact Pro to the bottom of it. And then you would have a Seat camera and a FLIR camera all in one device. So how about that regular camera? It's got a 50 megapixel camera. This phone will record in 1080p as well as 2K video, although it is limited to 30 frames per second. At first, the lack of frame rate was somewhat of a really big shock to me because I'm you know, used to shooting most everything in 60 frames per second. But having a phone that is completely okay to get splashed or the occasional dunking as often as I am next to the water, that has proven to be a worthy trade-off for me, so I am totally happy with my 30 frames per second. I have been really pleased with the still photos that come out of this phone. Uh, my only complaint is that if you're taking a picture of something that's moving fast, it will tend to blur that object. It doesn't seem to take really snap quick photos, but the photos that it does take they seem to look really well. I mean, I have no complaints about these photos. So overall, I have been really pleased with this phone. Now, I do wanna mention one thing that I have ran into that I also ran into on the BV8800, and that is outbound audio. Whenever you're talking to somebody on the phone, this phone seems to really bring in the stuff around you. Uh, it's almost like there's no noise filtering. I know everybody's gonna point fingers at this HD voice, but it really is like a, a gain setting, I, I think. So anyways, I am a PC user at heart, and to find this sort of thing available for the phone that I keep in my pocket all the time, apparently there's like standardized codes here for, you know, like specific processors and stuff. I just, I really don't know enough about this to be even telling you about it. I found this whenever looking for a solution for my little loud audio problem. I wanted to adjust the volume of this bottom mic or like turn on noise cancellation or, or do something with it. So I wound up right here at this website here, which for identification purposes, this is Mobile X Files, but they have a list of these codes that are available. So I'm gonna punch this number right here into the dial pad. 633 pound star pound star. And that lands us in engineering mode on this phone. Now, um, I had went through a website that told me how to adjust the gain on this. So as you can see, I mean, there are a freaking ton of things that you can get into once you're in, in engineering mode. I mean, I'm just like, this will have me busy for hours, but for the problem that I'm having over here on, let's see, what was it on? Under hardware testing, uh, we go into audio, and then under audio, we go into volume. And then once in here to volume under voice, I was able to adjust this UL gain, which in my mind strikes me as like upper level gain or, or whatever. But I reduced this number by 12 decibels and tested around on it. And I made a phone call to somebody that was complaining and they said, yeah, they, that's better. So I don't know if it actually made it better or not. But just now, I'm also noticing that we have this option here for speech enhancement. Oh boy, look at, I mean, just, we look at this, there's all of these different settings. There is just an absolute ton of settings here in engineering mode that being a PC user at heart and having this sort of flexibility, I think I would have a much better chance of deliberately sticking a hot fork in my eye than I would going back to Apple, like, Seriously? So then, speaking of configurability, here's something that I honestly did not know existed. Quick launch shortcuts. Use unique fingerprints to launch relevant shortcuts immediately from the lock screen. So if we enable this, and let's just, oh, say, I don't know, let's, let's pair up my pinky finger.
There we go. And now that we've got my pinky finger added, that is number three. And finger three, it says unlock device. But what if we go into the settings for finger three? So basically, if we wanted fingerprint three to take us straight to the calculator, we're gonna tell fingerprint three to trigger calculator. Okay, now to unlock the screen, I'm gonna try my pinky. Woo, calculator. Isn't that just stinking cool? I can't think that I would ever use that because it's got, it also has this configurable button on the side, which you can set up to do pretty much anything. You can get to this under gestures and keys and then side key function. So basically you can set this thing up to do something different for a single click, double click, or a long press. And I usually keep the long press on flashlight just because it's really handy. Pull it out of my pocket, hold that button down, flashlight's on. Um, but you can configure basically anything you want here. You know, you can set it up to open up different applications or start a sound recording, flashlight, screenshot, you know, all these different things. So I know for you all, this amount of time is gonna pass in like 20 or 25 minutes, but I have actually been using this phone for about a week now. And I'm finding that for whatever reason, it seems like the battery life on the, call me crazy, but this BL8800, I'm actually getting better battery life on this than I got on my BV8800. And that is for an entire week of like thermal imaging and taking pictures and like, I'm actually using it more than I normally would, but it seems to be lasting longer. So I seem to be charging this phone right now about every three days, which is pretty stinking cool. I mean, come on. Now, just a couple more things that I need to talk about before I get out of here. And the first one is waterproofedness. These things, nor is any other phone that I know of legitimately waterproof, they are water resistant. Now, they say IP68, all right? Now, the eight in that eight, that determines that it is, you know, what everybody's calling waterproof. And it is not a waterproof rating at all. It is basically saying, It'll survive under X amount of water for X amount of time. These phones, they have an O-ring that goes around the perimeter of this outer housing. Now, this isn't a teardown video. I did find one on YouTube if you'd like to search it up. But there is an O-ring that goes around the perimeter of this outer housing. So once the housing has been removed and, oh, say, the battery inside replaced, you can actually put the housing back on without dealing with a bunch of adhesive compared to a Samsung phone where they have literally used double back sticky tape around everything to hold the piece of glass on the back of it. And once that glass has been removed from the back, I mean, what in the world do you have to go through to try to seal it up like it was from the factory? So the last thing that I want to talk about is dual SIM capability. I did spend some time running my BV8800 with dual SIMs. And something that I found really cool is that I could run like a Cricut SIM card, which I believe was connecting to this type of cell phone tower. And then I could also run my Google Fi SIM card, which was connecting to this cell phone tower. So I would have two different signal indicators on the top of my phone and they would be different levels. So I'm literally connected to two different cell phone towers at the same time. So for somebody that is out and about and you're really worried about whether or not you're gonna have cell phone coverage, I do believe you can get CDMA and GSM coverage at the same exact time on this phone. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that. So if you know more about that than I do, please correct me in the comments below. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. I just, I really, I really do like this phone and you know, not as much just like this phone as Android phones. You know, I am an Android user at heart and I really love the flexibility that I'm getting out of this rugged phone. And uh, yeah, so anyways, that's it for now, everybody. I really thank you for watching and uh, I will see you soon. Have a good day. Something that nobody really knows about me is that I'm currently working in a freaking oven and to get crisp audio, I gotta turn the air conditioner off. And when I say hot, I'm not kidding. This thermal camera has got this clocked in at 95 degrees around the tops of the corners. Holy smokes. Look at this back in the corner where the pipe is. 130 degrees. Oh my God, I'm hot. <laughs> There's a drink in your hand. You could tell you're, you're walking around carrying like a black hole because it's, your drink is so ice cold compared to everything else. 
Oh, now Heldon's just a head sticking out of the water. <laughs> oh, wow. It's just the top of your head that's hot. It really does work. You can totally get into a pool of water. Look at you, you disappeared. Your head's even cool. Okay, do it again. Go all the way under and then come back up. Oh, the pool is nice. He's gone. It works. You can totally hide from predator with with water that's cooler than you. Nice. So what's the hottest What is the hottest part of my of my body? Your eyeballs. Really? That's Thanks. creepy. I don't want to know that. Okay, so our middle child's sleeping at dinner time. Dude. You need to sleep with some more heat sources in here. Jordan.